having an inspection tomorrow. Stand up straight. Lose the gum pocket. All right, ladies, in your bunks. And that's lights out. Because we take over from here. Guess. I don't want to guess. I'm pregnant. Well? What do you mean? Well, what do you think I mean? We're going to have a baby. I don't know about that, Jerry. Hey. It's Denny. Well, what do you want me to say? Take me back. Oh, Jerry. No. Take me back. Hey, Jerry, come on. Hey. Hey. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. Jerry, what do you say? Hi, baby. 
Is my baby all right? Your baby's fine. You sure? Here, see for yourself. Ooh. That's him. <laughs> Sounds really strong. <laughs> Jerry, the baby's father. Do you even know who it is? What the hell do you think I am? Don't you, Jerry? Watch your mouth. Do you ever see him? Does he come to see you? Not lately. What are you going to do to get out? Breathe. <sighs> what do you mean? Do you have a place to live? Breathe. Not yet. Well, don't you think breathe? It's time you start thinking about it. We'll manage. You have no means of support, no place to live, and you're a minor. Maybe it's time you start thinking about other options. Like what? Adoption. No. Oh, Mrs. Rory put you up to this, didn't she? Mrs. Rory had nothing to do with this. Wait, the state doesn't encourage you girls to keep these babies. I don't give a damn what the state encourages. I'm not a criminal. I oh, know you're not a criminal. You're what is called an incorrigible child. Scoot down. Wait down. My dad's the incorrigible one, not me. Cherry, there are good people out there. Lie back. He'll help me. The dad will help me. The dad's the one who committed you in the first place. But there are people who will take care of the baby and love it. I love it. I love him. I know what you're trying to make me do, but this baby's part of me, and no one's going to take him away from me. You hear me? No one. Oh, Jerry, look at you. What the hell are you doing here? I missed you. Baby, okay? He's fine. He? Hey, you think it's gonna be a boy? Mm -hmm. Where you been anyway? All this time, you never even called me. Well, I'm here now. All right. I'm gonna take care of you from now on. You don't believe me? Huh? Jerry, I love you. chair by the fire each night and rock our baby to sleep. Sentence. You don't want him to get used to your milk if you won't be there for him. <laughs> Prettiest one we've seen around here in a long time. You're keeping him? What the hell are you talking about? Of course I am. Hey, honey, don't snap at me. Some don't, you know. Well, I am. Dennis Craig Bucket. In your mind. What in the hell's going on here? I'm not signing these papers. I'm not signing my baby away. You have to, Jerry. We're only thinking about what's best for the baby. What's best for the baby is to be with me. You can't give him a proper home. I'm not giving up my son, Daddy. You can't come home, Jerry. 
Daddy. Help me. He can't. He's out of it now. What do you mean? Because of your age, you're awarded the state. Daddy, how could you do this to me? I mean, how could you just let me go like this? Nothing but trouble since the day you was born. Daddy, please help me. Just this one time. Just one time, Daddy, please. You're wasting your time, Jerry. The baby's father has already signed the papers. Danny signed these papers? Danny signed our baby away? Just sign it and let's get out of here. Then what happens? You can baptize him if you like. And then a foster family gets him first until we can find him a good home. Will I know where he is? The adoption record stays sealed until he turns 18. And then what? If his parents tell him he's adopted and if he chooses, he has the right to come and look for you. 18 years without my son? Sign the papers, Jerry. Get it over with. Sign. Jerry, Jerry. Uh-uh. Jerry, I didn't know. I swear I didn't know it. I thought it was paternity papers to prove that I was the oh, father. Oh, you didn't read them? I just signed. Jerry, Jerry, listen to me. Listen to me. All right, we'll have a whole house full. I swear we'll have a whole house full. You always sign papers without reading it first. Jerry, when that boy's 18, we'll come after him again. I swear to you. Jerry, damn it, don't go out on me like this. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, we come to you today to give to you the sanctity of another son who gives his child. I do. His mother, I give this child. Dennis Craig Pluckett. Pluckett. I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know, but I gotta be home before midnight tonight. You owe me one, Jerry. Hey. Hey, Danny. Baby's all right? Yeah, everybody's fine. the rush. You know what today is. Come on, Jerry. Don't start. Baby. Don't you care? Of course I care. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing either one of us can do anymore. But then he's three today. Let it go, Jerry. I can't. His birthdays are all I got. I know.
birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dennis. Happy birthday to you. That at once. Robert, come inside, please. Dennis, come inside. Dennis? That's a good boy for mommy. Dennis, I said it's time to come inside. Dennis? Dennis? Not yet. Dennis, come when I call you. Dennis? Now. No. Don't you say no to me, young man. I told you, I told you, time and again. Great meatloaf, Mother. So, my little darling, tell your father what you did this afternoon. Mm. Yeah. Well, me and Jimmy played on the jungle gym. Mm-hmm. Then what happened, sweetheart? Jimmy fell. So I see got to be more careful, Dennis. And you've got to eat. No! You have to learn what's good for you, Dennis. You have to learn to obey. You can't always have everything your own way. It's the devil in you. What are you going to? The devil's got him. He fights me on everything. Stop. Stop this instant. I don't know what to do with you anymore. I, I got something I have to do in the workshop. Stop it. You eat all your dinner now, you hear? Just eat this little bit. I'll give you two desserts. All right. Misty, open your mouth and eat this. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry, baby. That's a good girl. I'll take a bite. Okay. That's a good girl. Don't. <laughs> You're your mother's kid. Trespasses. I mean, give 
Forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would you repeat the last part again, please, Dennis? Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The last part again, please. Deliver us from evil. The words, Dennis. You must know God. They're God's words. Again. Deliver us from evil. 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 <laughs> What do you think? I don't know. What do you think, honey? I love it. Yeah? You sure? All right. We'll take it. Great. <laughs> wow. Don't forget this. Thank you. OK, thank you. Yeah, don't forget to look through the brochures. If you have any questions, call the office. Ask for Jerry Sherwood. I'll be there for you. Bye-bye. Fortune oh, yeah, what's she gonna tell me? I've been married twice. I've had my share of affairs. All I want now is to be left alone. I'll pay for it. <laughs> oh, hot shot, huh? Now that you're working downtown for the suits? No offense, Clayton. You're a good guy. For the egg. Haven't you got better things to do with your money than waste on fortune tellers? I think you're scared. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. You do? I do. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, have a seat, honey. I'm on a roll tonight. <laughs> Time. Time is a world for you. Too much time going by. Oh, yeah. You got children? Four. There's a child out there. This baby is lost. Alone. He needs to find his way home again. That's enough. I don't want to hear anymore. Mom, are you okay? <sighs> Fine. She didn't have to be talking about little Denny, you know. She could have been talking about any one of us. But she wasn't. How do you know? Because you're here. Denny's 19 years old. He's had a year to come look for us legally. Then why don't you look for him? Anything but more of the stewing on him. I gave him away. You had no choice. Well, he didn't know that. Then find him. Tell him. What if he hates me? <laughs> we don't. And we've got reason. We've been living with you for all these years. <laughs> oh, very funny. Very funny. Is this the Hall of Records for Ramsey County? My name is Jerry Sherwood, and I'm trying to find my son. He was born December 6, 1972. His name is Dennis Craig Puckett. No, he was put out for adoption. She and then the first year, hush, the first year he was in a foster home. And then after that, a family adopted him. And that's all I know. 
Look, I know I gave up the right to see him, but all I want to do now is find him. Can you help me out? How do we know that he'll even want to be with us? Well, I'd like to meet him. We've heard about this brother all our lives. Well, can you write him and tell him that his mother's trying to find him and that he has two sisters and a brother? I don't feel like he's my brother. My address is 26716 Lynette Court. Right. Thank you. They're going to unseal the records and contact Danny. And if he wants to see me, he's going to come. <laughs> so what do you think's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. It's almost as though for me and Danny, time has just stopped that he's still a little baby. Oh, um, well, that's because the last time you saw him, he was a baby. But Good going, Mom. Yes, Mrs. Speakman. No, I, I don't understand about the toilets. I called the plumbers uh, yesterday, two of them. Where's the dictionary? Top drawer. Yeah, right. Well, you know, they think they're kings around here. Uh, Mrs. Speakman, I, I gotta go without fail. is dead. Brother Dennis is dead? It says here he died when he was three and a half years old. He's been dead for 16 years and we never knew. He died in White Bear Lake. It's only 20 minutes from here. I want to see my baby. Excuse me, maybe you could help me. I'm looking for a grave. Name? Well, I... I don't know the name. Uh, he was adopted. I can't help you without a name. But I know how old he was and the year he died. He was three and a half years old. The year was 1976. Well, that's a long time ago. Three and a half years old? You know, I think there was a little boy about that age. Uh, let me have a look. Jackson. Jeffers. Jurgen. Dennis Craig Jurgens. Oh, there's an obituary here if you'd like to see. Oh, I remember the day they buried him. He was killed in a fall. What kind of fall? Down the basement stairs. It says right here. He was covered in bruises. Excuse me. I'm looking for a grave. You come to the right place. No, no, I mean, his name is Dennis Jurgens. It was a long time ago. I know where it is. You, you do? The fact is, the boy was a nephew of mine. He, he was your nephew? Yep. He's just here today, paying my respects to one of my nieces. Dennis was your nephew. Yep. His mother was my sister. Still is. It's a damn shame, you know. Child that age. Wasn't bad enough. They had to go putting it in the papers. Oh, the, the obituary, huh? No, not that. The other stuff. What other stuff? Well, it's stuff about him dying and all. You know, you'd think they'd leave people alone in their grief. She was good to him, though. Real good. She took him to church, gave him tap lessons, even bought him a pair of tap shoes. She was a good mother. That's it there. You knew the boy, did you? Hello? 
Hello. Uh, is this Mrs. Jurgens, Mrs. Lois Jurgens? Yes. This is she. Who is this speaking, please? My name is Jerry Sherwood. Look, you don't know me, and I know this must be a heck of a surprise me just calling you out of the blue and all, but, uh, well, the fact is, I'm, um, I'm Dennis's mother. Uh, Dennis, your adopted son, I'm his birth mother. I just recently found out that he passed away, and... You just found out? Yeah, just recently, and, and I want... I was under the impression you were told. His birth mother was told at the time. No. No one ever told me. So anyway, I wanted to, uh... I just assumed. His birth mother. Yeah, well, so... Anyway, I just... I just wanted to call you and, uh... I don't know, ask you about Dennis. You know, what kind of a little boy he was. Uh, what he was like, just... I was just curious. Well, I tell you, he was just the cutest little boy any mother could ever want. <laughs> What exactly is it you'd like to know, Mrs. Sherwood? Jerry Sherwood. Well, uh, the obituary said that he, um, died of some sickness, uh, peritonitis. Yes, we don't know how he got that. He was always getting into something. He was a very, uh, sickly little boy. It was some kind of infection. Nobody ever did figure it out. And the bruises? They said he had a lot of bruises. No, not bruises. Blotches. Uh, starburst markings. Maybe from the peritonitis. We can't think where else they might have come from. He was always into something. I gave him music lessons. And tap. He could recite the Our Father all the way through. There was a baptismal gown. You don't still have that, do you? Yes. <sighs> Would you like me to send it to you? Yeah, I'd appreciate it. And, uh, any pictures you have? Maybe you could send me one. Just so I could see what you look like. What's your address, dear? 26716 Lynette Court. I'll send those off to you today. Thank you, Mrs. Jerkins. Thank you so much. You know, I just... I, well, thank you. Tell Dad? Yeah. I have his name. Yeah. Why? So I could always have one of you with me. I couldn't help myself. Wonder if we would have been friends. You could be his friend now. How? I keep thinking about that old guy at the cemetery, the uncle, and all that stuff he was saying. You could go to the library and get me those clippings about Dennis's death. Mom, Mom, leave it alone. He's dead now. And, and, and you still got us. <clears throat> uh, could you tell me where the microfilm is, please? What are you looking for? Old newspaper clippings. How far back? 1976. Upstairs. Popular year. Thanks, honey. Listen to this. <clears throat> Investigation continues into the death of three and a half year old Dennis Jurgens. An autopsy showed he died of peritonitis caused by a ruptured bowel. Dr. Thomas Votel, Ramsey County Coroner, said today. Uh, the body also bore multiple injuries and bruises. You want me to stop? No, go on. White Bear Police and the coroner's office were investigating the death. That's it? Yeah, the, the Chronicle followed the story for three weeks and then nothing. What, what about the police investigation? <clears throat> nothing. W what do you mean, there was no follow-up? I mean, there's nothing, Mom. No, that can't be. You, you can't bring a kid in with bruises that kill him, start a police investigation that comes up with nothing, and then just stop it. I mean, it doesn't make sense. 
over with the cops. They pulled out, I guess. She didn't say anything to me about a rupture bow. She didn't say anything to me about multiple injuries. Blotches. That's what I got. Blotches. I guess that's what she calls the bruises. Well, maybe, maybe she thought it was bad enough you just finding out about him dying, you know? Maybe she didn't want to lay any more bad on Give me a break, Dennis. I'm just a stranger to her. I'm just a voice on the phone. Why would she care about laying bad on me? Maybe I'm missing something, Mom. What are you going for here? How do you work this thing? So, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think something's happened to my son. What exactly? I don't know. There was an investigation, and it lasted about three weeks, and then it just stopped. I don't remember the name of Sherwood. No, it was Jurgens then. Uh, Dennis Craig Jurgens. He was adopted. This case is 16 years old. I know something's wrong. Why did they drop the ball? Maybe they didn't have enough to work with. Maybe they came up empty. The article says he's covered in bruises. I want you to get back into this case and find out what happened to him. We can't do that, lady. Why not? <laughs> because we just can't go in and reopen a case with, without cause, just because you think we should. Look, a uh, case is old. We don't even know if we can find anything now. Be a lot of manpower just to risk coming up with nothing, Miss Sherwood. But what if it's something and you just let it go? Look, lady, we got more to worry about than a 16-year-old case that may or may not be real. We got real criminals on the streets and not enough cops already. I'll tell you what's real. My son is dead and something happened to him. And how do you know? The woman who adopted him, Lois Jurgens. I called her. She was supposed to send me some of Dennis's stuff, but she never did. All she had to do was send me one little picture of Dennis, but she didn't do it. Now, you tell me why. Maybe she forgot? She didn't forget. And you know how I know? Because I called her back and she changed her number. She's got an unlisted number now. Something's wrong here. I'm telling you, it doesn't feel right. I tell you what. We'll look into it. If we find out anything, we'll call you. Uh, look, officer, I'm not some nutcase running around loose here. The only nutcase in this thing is living over in Stillwater free as a bird. Uh, Miss Sherwood, ma'am, maybe you should call the welfare department. They're the ones who placed your son in the first place. Thank you. Job-wise. I mean, property management. Yeah? What's that? Real estate firm. Pick up rents. Proceed repairs, you know, stuff like that. Feed some of the crap I've done. I don't know, Jerry. You're one hell of a stripper. <sighs> Give me a break. What's this? It's Dennis's death certificate. Copy of it. You're kidding me. Where did you get it? County courthouse. See here, you see that box? What's that say? The first, so. But you see, it's supposed to say, I mean, if it doesn't say natural causes, it's supposed to say accident, suicide, or homicide. I mean, if it doesn't say one of those three things and they made a mistake, you're still alive, right? So what's this deferred bull? You're asking me. No, I asked my doctor, and he said that they put deferred down sometimes on a temporary basis. And then when I told him the date on this thing, he said he thought it was unusual. He didn't understand, and I said, well, it's a hell of a long temporary, and he thought so, too. He couldn't explain it. Well, I want to know... Who's going to explain it, Jerry? Someone on it. This page is what, what, 16 years old? 
there's a lot of people out there that would say this was a lot of water under the bridge. Let it go. That's what you always say. It's a better way than what you... What are you talking about? Quite blaming me, your father, the sister. I couldn't live with giving up our kid. That's why we didn't Do you make... think it was easy for me? How was it? Watching that... you go through all that? Well, what was it like, Dennis? What did you feel? What do you feel now? I got a new family now. I gave you two sons. Both have your name. One of them's dead, and the other one you Shut don't up, even Julie. talk to. Shut you up. never see him. You know... He needs you. Especially now. See what I mean? Not exactly. You mean you don't find anything suspicious about what you got right there in your hands? Oh, I can't understand how upsetting this must be for you. To find out about the death of your child after all these years, this is, uh... Come on. Sherwood. This is Sherwood. But frankly, I don't see the uh, sinister implications in those documents as you apparently do. Listen, I think these people killed my baby. Now, the welfare department put him with them in the first place, and it seems to me you ought to at least have a little interest in what happened to him after. Well, Ramsey County Welfare handled the adoption, but I doubt very much that you're going to find anybody still in the department that had anything directly to do with it. Listen, I don't care if they're still here. The welfare department's still here. You're here. You know, Mrs. Sherwood, I don't think you fully appreciate the implications of what you're saying. You're making a very serious charge here. Do you understand that? I'll tell you what I understand even better. The system took my kid away from me because they said I couldn't take care of him, and they gave him to someone they said could, and he's dead now. And my own children that I did take care of are alive. And I want to know if you're going to do anything about the one who isn't. Mr. Sherwood, um, we don't know what to say. Look, the truth is, your son's case should have been prosecuted in 1976. But child abuse was not an issue we knew much about then. If this came to us today, we'd go for conviction. So you think there was something? That my child was... We don't know yet. Can I see the file? Miss Sherwood, this file is tough enough for us. He was my son. Go slow. What we've been able to piece together so far is that the prosecutor didn't think he had a real case here, one that he could win. He didn't think he'd be able to prove anything, so the county attorney took it to juvenile court and had the other son, Robert, removed from the house. Oh, but they got him back. Yeah, after a couple of years. The county had no choice. They didn't have a case. At least he's alive. At least he's probably alive. Wherever he is. We don't know. We've been trying to locate him. What about Dennis? You've got a file full of witnesses that say that they saw Lois Jurgens hurt my son time after time after time. He was three and a half years old. With no one to protect him. No one alive. Please help my son. Put this woman away. I'm afraid we can't. At this point, there isn't much we can do. Put her in jail. Forget jail. There's no crime here. We can't arrest her without a crime. Dennis is dead. Oh, isn't that crime enough? What the hell does it take? A coroner's report that plainly states the cause of death was homicide. Fine. I'll get it for you.
So I called the coroner's office and they said they'd get back to me. But I'm not holding my breath. So then I got the name of this lawyer. Don't ask me how much it costs. I don't even want to think about it. But he says that I should talk to the medical examiner because he says you guys are the ones that the coroner listens to anyhow. And did you hear back from the welfare people? Oh, yeah. I heard back. And? He said he talked to his supervisor and that they were sorry they couldn't give me any more information and that they didn't think that I should have the information that I've already gotten and they could see no reason to pursue the matter any further. <laughs> Unquote. So, I don't know, I just, uh, well, I guess I got a little hostile. And he, uh, more or less hung up on me. So, uh, what do you think? Can you help me out? Can you tell if Dennis was beaten from the report by the exam? Can you tell what happened, how he died? I know that... Jerry, there are things going on with this case. What kind of things? They're being very secret. I got a call from the county attorney's office. They know you talked to the police. They told me you gave up your legal rights to Dennis. I have to stay out of it. You gotta help me. No, I can't. I've given you too much information already. And what do I do? What do I do? Dr. Esley, tell me what to do. If you call this man, his name is Frank Maxwell. He's a reporter at the Chronicle. You want me to go to the press? I think he can help you. You call him, Jerry. He can do what I can't now. Frank Maxwell? Yeah. Jerry Sherwood. Oh, how are you doing? You, you want to call me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I know you're real busy, but so far everybody's been passing me along. I mean, I could have had my hair done in the time I've been on hold so far. <laughs> so how about it? You got time to listen to a story? Uh, I'll tell you. Dr. I... Essling said that you would. What's it about? I think it's about a murder. You think? Well, if you want to listen, maybe you'll see why I think so. <laughs> Who do you think was murdered? My son. Uh huh. When do you think he was murdered? 1976. 1976. I know. I, I know what you're thinking. I just want to listen anyway. Shoot, there's no statute of limitations on murder. Oh. Great. Great. Hey! Hey, who are you? I'm Frank Maxwell. Yeah? You really Frank Maxwell from the Chronicle? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How you doing? Hey, listen, you by any chance know the people that used to live here, their name was Jurgens? Oh, sure, I knew them. But I've lived here 25 years. Really? Did you ever hear a little boy that died, his name was Dennis? I said all I have to say at the police 16 years ago. Ah, so there was an investigation? Sure there was. And what happened? Her brother William was a police lieutenant. Is that right? Hey, don't print that. Okay. Is that why they stopped the investigation? I don't know. Look, I didn't say anything oh, to you. Was, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Could I just... No, oh, don't print my name. Well, how could I print your name? You didn't even tell me what your name was. Good. Just leave me out of it. So I found out Lois's brother, Lieutenant William Benton. Lieutenant? Yeah, he was second in command of the White Bear Police back then. Is that why the investigation was stopped? Well, according to your friend, Officer Meehan, me and talk to you? He had to. I'm a reporter. What he said was that many of Lois's relatives were willing to talk, but when they came back to get the statements from them, they'd all clammed up, wouldn't say a thing. Then what? Well, then he talked to a guy on the force, another guy named Bob Vanderwist, who said that Lois Jurgens had terrorized the family so badly that they were afraid to sign any statements. But she did. She threatened to set all the children on fire. 
And apparently there was a hearing. It was just a custody hearing about the other son. Yeah, the police reports were all lost or misplaced, and so she goes free. Not when I'm finished. This is a copy of the coroner's inquest. Now, in those days, they got six unbiased people together, people who had nothing to do with the case, and they would review whatever evidence there was and make a determination as to the manner of death. And what did they determine? Not a damn thing. Well, did you get a chance to look at the new material we sent over? Oh, yeah. I sent it on to Dr. Nora Brody. She's a pediatric forensic pathologist. And I expect she'll confirm my feelings. What are your feelings about this so far, Dr. Esley? That <laughs> someone made a serious mistake a long time ago. Court is changing Dennis's death certificate to homicide. We've got a case. Goes for the prosecuting attorney. You're gonna be on the front of every newspaper and magazine by next week. You look great. You did it, Mom. You did, Jerry. You put Lois Jurgens on trial for murder. Run me him? Yeah. I am Robert Jurgens. Lois Jurgens' son? Oh, yeah, Bob. Here, here, here. Come in. Come in. Sit down. Thank you for seeing me. Oh, it's uh, uh, no problem. Uh, we were going to come see you anyway, so you saved us a trip. Look, I wanted to talk to you about my mom. Uh, reporters are hounding her about my brother Dennis. What's going on? The birth mother thinks it was abuse. We think she's right. So you're going to reopen the case? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, your mother was never formally charged back then, but we have the witness statements. And you want my cooperation, I guess. Uh, we'd like to have you with us on this, yeah. You were there. From what I hear, you're a good cop, Jurgens. I don't remember much. I was very young. Uh, five when he died. Well, here, I have an extra file. You can just take your time, look through it. Refresh your memory. Robert, if you want to talk on or off the record, give me a call. I cannot take this to the grand jury by September 1st. It is impossible. You've got two months. Well, this isn't the only case this office is working on. That's not my problem. Uh, it is if you want us to work with you. We don't rush in to do battle. That is not how it works. Well, why don't you tell me just how it does work? <laughs> Look, I don't have time to explain to you how we assemble a case. You think I'm stupid, don't you? That I couldn't understand. Oh, all right. Suffice it to say, this is a process. And it takes time. Justice does justice. not happen. Damn your justice. Damn all you people. Oh, now wait. Just... No, you wait. You wait 19 years to see the face of a child that was yanked away from you almost at birth. 19 years of staring into each little boy's face on the street, wondering each time, is he this age now? Thinking, well, he's probably this age now. Now he's probably in grammar school, and now he's probably in high school. And I thought about Dennis for 19 years, and 15 of them, he was dead. And you know why? Because of your justice. Because you people don't give the birth mother the right to know that her kid's dead. I can't do this, Jerry. It's Melinda's case. She hates me. Don't personalize this. Melinda's a sharp lawyer. I don't like her. But that's another story. Come on, I don't know Melinda, and I do know you. <laughs> you met me once through your daughter. I know, that's enough. I trust you. <laughs> Why, Jerry? You're not making any sense. Come on, Clayton, you can understand somebody like me. I've been on the outside just like you all my life. I need the system to defend my rights, my son's rights. And I don't trust the system. But I do trust you. Jerry, I'm telling you the truth. Melinda's good. She'll get it to trial. With the school board still in emergency session, there has been no word of a counteroffer to the latest proposal. I've been getting calls from the media. Meanwhile, Newspapers, TV, and what all. What have you been saying to him? Nothing. Well, that's what to say. Nothing. 
Our lawyer says we're not to talk to anybody. <laughs> Don't even move our lips, he says. <laughs> that includes the police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're talking to a policeman this minute. <laughs> well, not one we got to worry about. <sighs> He's our boy. Our Carolyn Horton asked the boy's natural mother why she started the investigation. Maybe if she's just going through it, no matter how hard That's it is. That's Jerry Sherwood. That somehow it'll help me finally put Dennis to rest or something. I'd like to think that he'd finally be able we to... We're getting another new number. I can... Unlisted. I don't know. From now on, we'll have to call you. Of course, you can always call the lawyer. I gave you that number, didn't I? Mm -hmm. You can call and leave a message you want to talk to us. Mr. Thompson. I do want to talk to you, Mom. About Dennis. Ma? Dennis was... too old when we got him. A year already. Why did you take him? I was almost 40. It was a cutoff for adoption. I was afraid I wouldn't get another baby. I never had the time to... work with him, teach him the way I wanted him to be. The right way. Like with you. You were such a good boy, Robert. What happened the night Dennis died, Mom? You know what happened. No, I don't. All you ever said was he got sick and he went to heaven. At 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, Dennis was sitting on the toilet talking with Dad. He was okay. An hour and a half later, he was dead. That doesn't make sense. What killed him? I don't know why he died. What, was it the fall down the steps? No, that was the day before. He didn't feel pain. It wasn't normal. How could we tell he was hurt if he didn't tell us? I don't know why that woman wants to hurt us. You've got to help me, Robert. Make her stop. I go to the cemetery, right? And uh, there's a man there I've never met before in my life. Well, it just so happens that he is Lois Jurgen's brother. I mean, on that day, at that minute, at that time, for me to be there and him to be there, it's just, it's really strange. I mean, somehow I just think it was meant to be. Mm. I find out all about this. I mean, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's going to out there. I told you. Once you open this up, it's like a uh, Pandora's box. I just wish they'd go away. No, you don't. Just use them. What for? I brought something for you. Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like he has your spirit. Dennis, he looks just like you, like when you were a baby. Let me see. Look. <laughs> hey. So, so. Thanks for coming to meet me. Do you want something to eat? Uh, no, I'm not hungry. Here, this is for Josh. Oh, we, we just didn't get around to sending that, you know, well, what's, well, what's going on? That's okay, Bob. I don't say anything, Bob. Not to anybody. Why is that? 
What do we have to hide? Just if they're dragging us through the mud with this thing. I need to talk about it, Pop. Why? I don't. Every time that reporter calls, he upsets your mother. I remember things. You know, like when Dennis got caught in the rose bushes? Dennis was a clumsy boy. He fell. Yeah, I know. That's what Mom says. He was clumsy. He didn't feel pain. He fell down the stairs. Pop, I remember the night Dennis died. He was okay. You took him to the toilet, and he was talking. And, and then it rained really hard. And I remember hearing screams coming out no, of the you bathroom don't, door, you don't, you don't and remember. the police showed you. Don't remember. You were five years old. I don't have to listen to this from my own damn son. Haven't I been through enough already? They want me to testify. Do, do what you have to. I'm going to go home and be with your mother. Okay. That's it for now. I'm Melinda. We have a situation developing here. The uh, press is all over the Jordan's case. Oh, for the moment, they'll move on. No, I don't think so. Long before you uh, take it to grand jury. In a couple months, give or take a few weeks. It's not fast enough. Well, I've got piles of information that me and Kendall have dug up, but we still have to prepare search warrants to follow leads to some of the witnesses. The son, uh, when Robert, has he indicated that he uh, might be cooperative? No, not yet. I don't know why he would. Well, why not? Well, it's his mother. Jerry Sherwood says she'll picket this office if we don't get to the grand jury by September 1st. We can't give into that kind of pressure. That woman is a loose cannon. She's a fact of life. <laughs> well, I resent the hell out of her trying to intimidate this office. Melinda, Jerry wants you off the case. She wants Clay. I want the two of you to work together as co counsel <laughs> No offense, Clayton, but that is absurd. No, no, no. She knows Clayton, and she trusts him. He can help keep the lid off. It would take me weeks to brief Clayton. If you're concerned about the time, this is going to set the investigation back a month. We don't have a month. Now, there's already been enough scandal attached to this case. You just move as fast as you can. We can't afford any more time or bad press. I want this settled within the week, right? My mother sent this to my son. Do you think it's some kind of warning? Do you think she'd try to hurt Josh? Bob, I don't know. Maybe if you testify. What you gotta understand here is what my situation is in regard... What my situation is in regards to loyalty. Loyalties. There's my loyalty to my parents, and there's my loyalty to the law. We can appreciate that, Pop. As a police officer, here. Maybe you could, uh... Could you tell us what your relationship with your parents was like since you've been an adult? It's very good. Uh, were you out of the house for quite a while? I was away from home for five years. And I never really knew what was going on. I never knew then, and I never knew after. They just said he died. But we never really sat down, and... Uh, I've never brought up anything about Dennis all these years until this thing came up. And I asked him, uh, my dad. And he didn't seem to want to talk about it much. At all. And I guess that's what's ticking me off right now, is that, hey, this is a homicide. How can you just sit there and not have the guts to tell me what's going on? Why do I have to be quiet? What is there to hide? They've never had the guts enough to get a hold of me and tell me, you know, this is what happened. 
Even after I came back, after I was away all that time, they could have told me then, they could have told me something. I was old enough to be told something. I was nine, ten years old. I was old enough. Robert, we need you. We have to prove that Dennis died from a hard blow to the stomach, like from Lois' shoe. Robert, you're a cop. I am her son. You gotta talk. We got it, Jerry. <laughs> we got Robert. <laughs> Now, we get a grand jury indictment, and it should be no time before we go to trial. <laughs> what I still don't get, though, is why they didn't prosecute her back then. How could they let her walk away like they did? Well, it probably would have been an almost impossible case to win it. Why? Well, back then in the early 70s, it would have been hard to find three people in that entire town who'd ever heard the phrase child abuse. No gravy, please. And if they had heard it, they probably would have known exactly what it meant. No one would have imagined, much less believed, that nice, respectable, religious, middle-class people living on nice, tree-lined streets murdered their children. And a doctor's testimony would have been crucial, but back in those days, it would have been virtually impossible to find a doctor to give that kind of testimony. Well, what about now? Is she going to have to pay for what she did? We're not sure. Let's do it. Won't take long. Last time I saw this place, I was leaving in a police car. Here I am coming back to it in one. Hey, Good morning. Buddy. How you doing? Still with us? This is kind of funny, you know. Are there people who live here now? Are they home? No, it's been prearranged. It's okay. Come on in. This is the living room. We weren't allowed to play in here. Was this the dining room when you were a kid? and I shared this room. Don't let him leave. anything about this area? No, stop! No, look what you've done! Dennis! Dennis! It's almost over, baby. Almost over.
People versus Lois Jurgens, docket number 11783. The Honorable Judge David Marsden presiding. Be seated. Please proceed. Dennis Craig Puckett came into this world December 6, 1972, the child of a 17 year old unwed mother who was forced by a system to give him up for adoption. A system that told her this was what was best for her son, but as it turns out, it killed him. Dennis was a happy baby, but for Lois Jurgens, Dennis was a big disappointment right from the start. For one thing, Dennis was a husky little boy. Lois called him sloppy fat. He was as big as Robert, who was a frail child, and Lois worried terribly that Dennis would bully Robert. <laughs> there was no bully in this loving little boy. You'll hear testimony that Dennis succumbed to years of abuse at the hands of Lois Jurgens and died on Palm Sunday, April 11, 1976. The actual cause of death was peritonitis from a ruptured bowel. Medical experts will tell you that it takes great force to rupture a bowel, and it is not a pleasant way to die. It is marked by high fever, nausea, vomiting, a rigid, bloated stomach, and later coma and death. And they will also tell you that given prompt medical attention, even in 1976, it did not have to be fatal. Thank you. Mr. Thompson. It's true. You were going to hear witnesses tell you some terrible things about Lois Jurgens. You will hear that Lois is a bad person. And you will probably not approve of her methods of child rearing. She battered Dennis. There's no doubt about it. I'm not going to tell you that what Lois did to Dennis is OK. Lois shouldn't have adopted that child. But what I am going to tell you is that even though she abused Dennis, the abuse that Dennis suffered at her hands did not cause his death. Now, the district attorney's office is going to try and prove that a fatal blow to the abdomen caused the injury which resulted in peritonitis and death. They will bring in a lot of experts to explain how Lois must have hit Dennis to cause the ilium to rupture. But the key words here are must have. We don't know who or what hit Dennis Craig Jurgens. We cannot say without a reasonable doubt that it was Lois Jurgens who struck the fatal blow. Lois shouldn't have been allowed to adopt a child. Now that's not a defense to murder. But it doesn't prove murder. Thank you. Having heard counsel's opening statements, court will take a one-hour recess. How's it going? I'm okay. This thing's pretty weird for my family, though, you know? Yeah, I'll bet. Press are waiting outside my house every day. Just won't quit. My son Josh got a black eye the other day defending his grandma to some kid in school. Anyway, that's why I'm here. I've uh, been thinking about it, and uh, I don't want to take the stand in Robert. We need your testimony. You were there. This thing is tearing up my family. I got to think about my family. What about Dennis? There's nothing I can do for him now that's going to change what happened. I made my peace with my mother. Jerry Sherwood comes along and this whole thing gets stirred up again. And for what? Look, Robert, this case means a lot to me. And not just professionally, but personally. I was adopted, too. I ended up in a good home. Well, you were very lucky. Well, all I know is... The system failed, Dennis. 
all those people saw what was going on and weren't able to save him. You were a child. You couldn't do anything then, but you can now. And put my mother behind bars? Robert, I can still put you on the stand. Robert, I know you'll do what's right by Dennis. I'll get him. Mrs. Benton, are you familiar with a woman named Lois Jurgens? Yes, she's my aunt. Marie, may I call you Marie? <laughs> Thank you. Do you remember going to a function at your father's home, William Benton, when Dennis Jurgens was about two years old? Yes. Do you remember anything unusual occurring? Lois was putting food into his mouth with a fork. He was sitting in a little high chair and, and she was feeding him. And his mouth was getting pretty full. He wasn't swallowing his food. And so she put horseradish into his mouth to make him swallow it. She held his mouth open and she put the fork into the horseradish and then into his mouth backwards with the fork. Was she gentle in doing this? She was pushing the fork down in his mouth. And he was gagging. What happened after he started to gag? She said, if you throw up, you're going to eat it. And what happened after she made that statement? Dennis threw up. And what did Lois Jurgens do, if anything, in regard to that? She fed it to him. Pardon? Vomit. She fed him vomit. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Do you have any recollection of what it was like at home before Dennis was placed in your house? I recall it just being a very quiet home. It was lonely. I'm afraid. What made you afraid? My mother. Will you tell us about your mother? I cherished my mother, you know. I mean, I was afraid of her, but she was number one in my book. I looked up to her. I did anything she said. I cleaned my plate. I picked up my toys. I kept neat. And Dennis didn't. You remember Dennis? Yes, he was my brother. He was not your brother, man. He's my brother. Order, please. Counsel? Do you recall any differences between the way you were treated and the way Dennis was treated by your mother? I recall Dennis being picked up off the ground by his ears. I recall him being spanked with a spatula, a rolling pin shaken violently. His hair got pulled a lot, that sort of thing. Who would do this to Dennis? My mother. Would you describe to the jury, please, the day of Dennis's death? I was riding my trike in the same part of the basement, and I heard a loud thud or several thuds. You're not 
nothing but trouble. What are you gonna learn, Dennis? She picked him up and she began to holler at him. Dennis, Dennis, what? And she hit him. Dennis, what are you doing? Dennis, come on. And she kicked him and she shook him. Dennis. It was a kind of a general hitting, just sporadic strikes, Dennis. really. Dennis. And she kept calling out his name and shaking him and hollering at him. Mr. Jurgens, why have you come forward at this time and told about these things? I've always wondered about it, you know? And I never had any answers. And after he passed away, I didn't have a brother anymore. He was my brother. And I guess I just think I kind of owe it to him. Thank you. Now, Robert, you have indicated that since you've become an adult, you've had a good relationship with your parents? Yes, sir. And in fact, they have watched your child for as much as up to three weeks. Isn't that correct? Yes, sir, it is. And this was in their home without you? Yes, it was. So you would say that over the years, you've had a good relationship with your mother? Yes, sir. And do you feel that you have any grudge against your mother? No, no, I, I wouldn't... No, I wouldn't call it that. Well, then, Robert, do you really believe that your mother caused Dennis's death? Yes. Yes. <laughs> no further questions. The witness is excused. The prosecution rests. Mr. Thompson will... Uh first witness for the defense be available tomorrow morning? The defense will not be calling any witnesses, Your Honor. We'll reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. You ever make any guesses about what juries will do? I try not to. You know, without you, this never would have happened. Well, I don't know about that. Frank, I think I'll go out of my mind if we lose. No, you won't. <laughs> Members of the jury, have you returned a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We, the jury, Find the defendant not guilty of the charge of murder in the second degree, but guilty of murder in the third degree. Unintentional cause of homicide while engaging in felony assault. It is the opinion of this court that Mrs. Jerry Sherwood was served a great injustice by this system. We are here to build humanity, not destroy it. As a birth mother, a minor, her rights were stripped and taken away, including the right of notification of the death of her child. Today, she'd be allowed to keep her child, even in prison. Perhaps if we heard her cries, if we had judged her differently, Dennis Craig Jurgens would be alive today. Will the defendant please rise? Mrs. Jurgens, if it were up to me, I would lock you up and throw away the key. But I cannot. 
I can, however, give you the maximum sentence under the law of 1976. Lois Jurgens, you are hereby remanded to the custody of the Women's Correctional Facility for a period of 25 years, of which you will serve not less than eight years. Case closed. <laughs> Thanks.